show is called Convenient Nationalism. Um, how do we identify the difference between real African nationalists with the socioeconomic and political agenda and closet integrationists hiding behind pseudo-intellectualism and cultural pretensions? Uh, let me break that down in layman's terms. Basically, convenient nationalism is when you get somebody who becomes black when there's a situation or becomes black or African when they're in trouble. And usually the philosophy, their their main core ideology is integrationist, and the only time they get black is, you know, like if there's a situation where um, they personally are affected by the system or by some form of racism as they perceive it, because, you know, to them racism is an event. It's not a system. So that's basically it. I just want to know, like, how everybody um, can separate the wheat from the shaft and figure out um, how do you know whether the person you're talking to is of like mind or whether they're just an integrationist in hiding. So I'm just going to go right to the callers. Um, my first caller is, oh, let me just say this. If you call and you're in the queue, I'm going to put you on. So if you don't want to be put on the air and contribute to the con, you know, conversation, then don't call in because I'm going <laughs> to put you in the queue and um, have a conversation with you because they only give us, like I found out that the first hour, they give us about six or seven callers, and then the next hour it can go up to like 14. So when you're in the queue and you don't want to participate, that's somebody else that you're blocking from getting into the show. So just, you know, no offense, but that's just the way it is. Um, Let's see. Our first caller, last four digits, 2439. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Peace to the God. This is... Ambassador Arcea calling from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Peace, God. Peace. Uh, so did you hear the topic? Convenient nationalism. Yes. You know, you know that could you could also have a title, uh, convenient consciousness as well, because <laughs> people seem to, <laughs> because people seem to be conscious when it's convenient, and then and then uh, you know assimilate when it, when it's when it's not. So. What's what's what would be an example of con- um, convenient consciousness? You know these people that they rah rah they all about the sh- about the struggle about our people you know you hear you right about the white man you know this that and the third and then when you see them they out with Joey at the, at, at, at the at the picnic talking some some real hey how you doing Joey um, you know <laughs> and I, I'm sure Barack Obama you know the thing that makes him that, that appeals to him. Is because he'll probably in a, in a in a conscious circle. He you might be like, damn, this dude sound like Malcolm X. <laughs> but if you get another single, like, is this the same guy? Mm. You know, we got to be, and that's and that's and that ties into your title, convenient nationalism. We have to be real, a hundred percent. You know, we can't be, we can't. There's no time for this dipping and 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 going in and out. You know, choosing when we want to be down and what. We have to be one hundred, as they, as they, as they say today. We got to be one hundred with this. Right. I mean, I know, like, like we've had situations, me and you, when we're hanging out, and we've come across some um, convenient nationalists. Like, remember one time years ago when we was in Washington Square Park? Yeah. Remember that? And we had a brother that was dropping it straight, straight, Marcus Garvey, Dr. <laughs> York, Dr. Ben Khalid Muhammad wrapped up in the one dropping it about the black man, about the white man, and about the the origin of this and that. And we were like, damn, this brother is deep. And then Buffy came along. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm coming across these people more and more. You know, like I, I said on my last episode, I had a run-in with a YouTuber who I'm, I'm thinking is down, you know, and, and kicking the same ideology when in actuality it was a Negro in hiding, an integrationist in hiding. Mm. It's like I always find it curious how 
people are always talking about how black folks need to do this and black folks need to do that and always culturally critiquing. But when it comes time to talking about power, then they want black folks to fall back. Or their philosophy is, well, how can we obtain power without offending white people? Right. As if that's an actually an issue for you. Right. You know, I don't I don't understand why a person entertains that question in their mind. Like, who cares? Hmm. When you when you're trying to obtain power, why do you care what other people feel or think? Yeah, you know, you know, you know. One thing I, I've been doing the the, um, the knowledge whole, about the whole language thing. It's interesting how they use nationalism um, to associate with any other culture. Like, I don't. Where, where's the American nationalist? You don't see a person if you if you if you're a person that say you take pride in your country. It's all about are you are you called a nationalist? Right. You're not called a nationalist. You know, you, you know, you might be a patriot or some other term. It's like how they use these terms. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it is very interesting. Right. Yeah, you're true. Very so interesting true. How they, use term, how they use these terms. The same, you know, so, but, yeah, but, it's, but it's, like I said, it's, it's time to weed them out. We have to get on. I mean, if you haven't gotten on board, you know, frankly, I think I think the, the, the busting came and left already. <laughs> because this is this is stuff that we, what we're building on is stuff from the from the. Late eighties in the nineties. This is this has been a long time. This ain't nothing that just happened overnight. So, you know, oh yeah, you get get with it. Definitely. Well, stay on. I'm not going to yep. put you on hold. I'm going to just leave you open. But I'm going to bring another caller in. All right. So we can kick it with them. Last four digits zero four one eight. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's up to the gods? Peace is Max Six Eleven. Calling from Hollis, Queens. You hear any uh, sounds behind you? I'm in transit. I'm about to get off the bus. Uh, I just left you. Peace, Peace. God. Um, I've been listening to what you and Brother Tola have been saying. And, uh, you know, like you said, we got to be 100. In fact, we got to be 1,000 with it. And... You know, people, people, we see people like Bill Cosby who he kicks this this rhetoric and game. It seems that people might think that he's down for us, but really he's not. For him to, to you know, the speech that he did that uh, some people, I agree with what Bill Cosby said. He did it in front of, he did it in a, in a, in a forum filled with white people, which... He aired our dirty laundry. That's a no-no. And um, also, I've seen Bill Cosby. If I don't see you in the streets, in the forums where I'm at, you, you more than likely you're not down. Let me ask you something in regards to that. Did he really air our dirty laundry? Well, not really, because it's, it's no fact. But still, to do it in, in front of white people. No, but let, let me let me explain what I mean by that question. He 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 went on a rant talking about how lower class blacks or urban blacks are setting the race back and whatever. And mm-hmm. people say that he's airing out our dirty laundry. But I have some dirty laundry that I think can be aired out. Mm-hmm. And it don't involve lower class blacks. Did he air that dirty laundry? No. Oh, conveniently, the, the the dirty laundry that involves his people, his his talented tenth, his black elite, he conveniently uh, left out of the conversation. Of course. So my thing is, he never aired no dirty laundry. If you really want to air some dirty laundry, let's get deep into the shit. Oh, you know. He would never do that because, therefore, he he, he can't do that as a, as a talented tense. Oh, really? You mean he can't talk about Coca Cola? No. <laughs> can't Coca-Cola. talk about can't talk about Philadelphia and how him and Jesse Jackson and Dr. J, all of them um, protested against Coca Cola 
until Coca Cola cut them in on the action, and then all of a sudden the co- the the, the um, protest was over. No, because they they already threatened him by killing his son and killing Dr. J's son. Hmm. Conveniently, their sons died a mysterious mysterious death. I want to know how selling out the Coca-Cola is pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. Can somebody help me with that? If anybody could call in and show me how that's um, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, I would love to hear it. It is. Because these, a- these niggas are so quick to tell somebody how they're supposed to work hard to get it this and get that. A- how much hard work do these motherfuckers do? It is because he got a big check for that. And, uh, you know... It was convenient for Jesse Jackson when he was running for the presidency back in, uh, was that, 84? Mm-hmm. Was it 84? Can I break it down? Break it down, bro. I'm going to break down the art of the shakedown. There was a book that was actually written on it, but I knew about this before the book was written. So let me just break it down in layman's terms. This is this is what a shakedown is, and, and Jesse Jackson and his he's crew have specialized in this. He's the, he's the king, the grandmaster. I think he has the the Kung Fu finger book of shakedowns. And this is how it goes. What you do is you pick a white corporation, usually liberal, and most white liberal, you know, like you're going to see with most white corporations that they're not going to really have a whole lot of black people in powerful positions there. So what you do is you go to them, and you protest first. You protest them, and then you protest about, oh, you're not hiring blacks, and da 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 So then once you do that, the people who run the corporation call you, the leader of the protest, into a meeting. Mm. And in this meeting, they ask you, what do you want? They cut a check, and then what you do after the check gets cut you go to your people, tell them that the protest is over, you get paid, and then you wait for the next company or the corporation to shake down. The people don't know what you're doing. The people just assume, and, you know, like, and then you get some, some window dressing. They might hire um, somebody who's black and blah, 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 just you know, so they can say that some progress was made and your protest was effective and whatever. But the reality is the whole reason why you raised the issue was so that you can be the liaison, and get paid. Mm. It's the shakedown. And he shook down Major League. Name all the people that he shaked down. He shook down Major League Baseball. He shook Pepsi. down the Oscars. Pepsi. Pepsi. Grammys. The Grammys. Let's go, go on and on. Um, are we missing anything? I mean, he's done it with so many so many corporations. I mean, I, I lose track. What Didn't he do it with the NBA, too? Yes, he did. Mm. NBA, yeah, NFL, be, I mean, yeah, just just pick one. It would be nice to see these guys. Like I said, Bill Cosby, you know, he 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 has contributed um, to our culture in terms of, at least in terms of, you know, some imagery. <laughs> I mean, without Bill Cosby, I don't know, we wouldn't have any, any we would just be good times. That would be it. But at the same time, I would love to see these brothers articulate the racism. I don't see them, you know what I mean? I don't have a problem. If you got a critique as an older black man putting in your work or putting in time, I don't have a problem with you critiquing issues that black people need to work on per se. But I have a problem with you doing that at the omission of talking about this white supremacy, right? And this race and this racial construct. Build on that. Like you said, are you gonna are you gonna um, blame Frankenstein, the monster, right. or Doctor Frankenstein? Right. Talk about what Dr. Frankenstein has done. Flip on him. If you're going to flip on Frankenstein, then you need to really flip on on Dr. Bill, Frankenstein. Bill can't do that, though, because, and I know you, you were talking about chess uh, early in right. the forum. Um, his, his, his grandmaster is, is not going to allow him to do that. And, and hmm. he, he, he's not, he's not going to talk about that. He, he's going to talk about everything but that, because that that doesn't there's no benefit in it for him to do that. Because remember what happened? He tried to buy and he wanted he he tried to buy NBC, which we know could never happen. 
Um, before I bring the next caller in, there's a question in the um, chat room um, by Aiden UK. And I think maybe our ambassador might want to handle this one. Why is it? Why is this whole Afrocentric movement geared toward Egypt? It's good to understand your past, but it's not entirely your future, even though it might have an impact on it. This is from the UK, brother from the UK. Aiden UK, that's his screen name. Peace, Aiden. Well, first of all, you know Egypt is 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 a crown example of our greatness. And it's one of the it's one of the examples that we have where it's not a mystery. I mean, we're talking about one of the seven wonders of the world, with the pyramids being built, the Sphinx, um, the knowledge, the science of health and he- health and healing through Imhotep came out of Egypt. Um, all of the things that you see today is replicated um, from Egypt, even in the dollar bill. If you turn your dollar bill around, Aiden, you can see that they even pay homage to uh, Egypt by having the eagle facing Egypt. The eagle's face is facing towards Egypt as the light, and you see the light coming from the eye. So Egypt is the place where we come from, and these are our people. If you do the research, these are the high, where the hieroglyphics were, 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 were kept. So we go back to Egypt because this is a, a, a great example of where we came from in our past, and that can't be taken from us and denied. Remember, when we came over to this country, when you thought about Africa, you didn't even realize Egypt was even in Africa until later on in your life. You thought it was in the Middle East. You were going by Tarzan, and you thought that you were just a, you know, you barely could speak English. You was a Yasa boss. You had no consciousness of where you came from. So that's why we keep going back to Egypt. And we will continue to go back to Egypt until we uh, retain that Egyptian mind state. That's the most important part, the right. mind state of the Egyptian. And really the what they should do is refer to it as now Valley Civilization. Right. Because, you know, Egypt is not the name. Egypt means land of the burnt-faced blacks, which was named by the Greeks. We wouldn't call ourselves burnt-faced blacks. That was a name given to us. It was, uh, it was Kemet, K-M-T. There was no vowels. It was Kemet. Also, That's what the um, name was. Also, um, other races and other people look back to their past. Why shouldn't we? That's right. Right. Where, I, mean, I would like to ask this brother Where should we look If we was to look Because remember We look back at this past here All we have is An enslavement Where are we Where are we supposed to look Alright When he at, when he responds to that I'll definitely read it okay. uh, I'm going to bring in Another caller They have their hand up Zero Two Four nine Last four digits What's your name Where are you calling from Hello 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 How you doing yeah, that's how I call it from D.C. How you doing? Fine. D.C. Okay. in the house. Huh? I said D.C. is in the house. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, like, so you basically saying how we supposed to see who's real and who's not out of this whole thing, right? Right. Yeah. My opinion is that we're not going to be able to see who's real and who's not out of, the, out of this whole Internet thing because anybody could be whatever they want to be on the Internet. Like, all they got to do is just read a couple of books, Throw on a dashiki, learn a couple of words saying hotep and aslam alaikum and stuff, and then that's when you know they got followers. So you can really not know who's real and who's not if you're not dealing with them, how you call it, personally. Mm-hmm. Well, what know? about personally, though? Like, not, not so, I wasn't really thinking so much about the Internet, but just like in your everyday life when you come across people. You got to see what they're actually about. If they keep on switching what they're saying and... If it's how you call it, if if what's going on with them, if if it's make if you if it's if it's good for them, like say, I'm, no, I'm not gonna say any names, but say somebody doing something and they doing it and they getting money, but then once mm-hmm. they stop getting money, that's when they want to stop and hop on to the next thing they could profit off of. Right. That's one way that you can see it all because there's a lot of stuff on on that inside how you call this so con- called conscious community. You got a mm-hmm. lot of people who just. When they could, when they could see they getting profit, that's when they go ahead and deal with that. When they see that's not working no more, they hop on to the next thing. I mm. agree. I agree with you, and I and that's the reason why I believe like we talking with a whole lip. I was talking with a whole lip off the air about that same concept. We were brothers that if you if you just for us personally, 
um, before all this, before the, 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 all the cities, all the people, no disrespect to them, before all these people came about, we were interacting with our community a long time ago. We had a T-shirt called The Nigga Must Die. Mark, um, Max 611 was in on that. Um, we were interfacing, but we kept it 100 with it. We wasn't trying to be famous and known and run around here and jump on the Internet. We was like, we're going to do the knowledge. And, and by the time we reached the people, we had already did so much studying and so much falling back. I think a lot of these brothers, like you said, they jump in, they read two books. They might have met the, the miseducation of the Negro and how to eat to live, and now they're ready to run out here and tell everybody how to, how to live their life. you got to do the homework. you got to spend time falling back, studying, researching, analyzing. Then I believe you have a right to come out and, and, and speak your piece. You know, oh, and and, and, if, and if they not dealing with the real problems, because there's so many people who getting so sidetracked by a whole bunch of other stuff that's unimportant right. and not, and not right. dealing with the main thing, and then right. how you call it, that that shows you that they're not really for the cause because they want to be on some other type of bullshit that don't got nothing to do with anything, but in the time right. it comes with dealing with the actual problem, then they don't want to go in for it. Yeah, and those are the ones that's usually the easiest to identify because they're all into the aesthetics. They're all into the image mm-hmm. of consciousness and not consciousness itself. Perfect example is um, the, the the song that the sister did, um, Aisha Sekhmet. These dudes, she made she made a song on YouTube called "You the White Man's Bitch," where she's going at Negroes and going out people, you know, like the, saying y'all ain't keeping it real. You're not out here fighting for our people. And instead of the the dude saying, you know what, damn, that sister came strong with it. She was banging on her. They talking about her hairstyle. <laughs> yeah. You know, like like come on, man, what the. <laughs> They want to be distracted by everything else because the time Distract. somebody want to start talking about something real, that's when they want to become. That's when they choose yep. to tell the show, and then everybody see that they're just some bitch ass niggas. So. Yeah. Yep. And the same thing with these. Even even our even our our friends. I mean, I mean, like I said, I love them. I got a lot of friends that I connected with back through the Facebook or but they want to talk about the Cowboys and what's going on in football, and I can give a mm-hmm. damn about no damn football game. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Football. Yeah. I've been so football. out of that, man. Man, please. I don't, like I said, I don't even have a TV, man. I don't have a TV. I don't keep the radio on. And when I have something playing in the background, it's something that I pick to play in the background. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm usually, like, listening to I'm, – I'm telling you, it's keeping it 100. I'm usually listening to a lecture. I'm listening to my my archive or show to try to see how I can do it better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not listening to a whole bunch of um, crap being fed into my subconscious. Stop it. Yeah, we gotta you know? keep we gotta keep it real, man. We gotta keep it real with this, and that's and that's the conveniency. What you're talking about, sis, is the convenient nationalism. It's, it's when it's convenient for you to put on the dashiki or to, or to wear the gay lay or whatever you want to put on the costume, because see, you identify by your costume. So if a guy walks around with a police uniform on, you don't have to question what he is. You assume, oh, this guy is a cop. Mm-hmm. So if he, if he talks to you in a commanding voice or say something to you like, oh, well, okay, that's an officer talking to me. No, right. that's a guy that has a, has a uniform on. You need to see some identification more than that. Right. But that's what you were just saying about how you call You get to choose what you want. But that's one of the good things about the Internet because you do get to pick and choose what you want to listen to. Instead exactly. of going on the TV, they putting on what they want you to watch. Exactly. And, uh, it, it, so it helps your consciousness so much when you don't listen to commercials because that's all, all they really want to, us to be is, just like in the Matrix, a battery. So that they can use you up until you're dead, and then they can toss you away. Mm-hmm. And even with, like, all the cartoons, how you call it, they put out the cartoons, so when you go to the store and you got your little kid, you're going to buy them all the stuff that got the cartoon face on it. Exactly. Just so yeah. they can profit off of you. Yep. That's all it's about. It's just feeding off of you and leeching off of you until you can't provide any more sustenance, and then they just discard you. Mm-hmm. You know, I gotta say this too. You know, one thing I, we said we was at the, um, and I'll let know because he was there. We was at the Jacob Javits on in 2003. We was talking with the community, was getting the surveys done. Uh, we said we had a we had a statement that said the revolution must be financed. You know, there's nothing wrong with a brother that's out here or a sister that's out here in the struggle that's um, trying to enlighten us and is sincere about it. Receiving money to do that There's nothing wrong with that Because we receive money to go to these corporations 
And these people can't, obviously, these corporations don't want, you know, this information out. So, obviously, these people are going to have to live some kind of way. We've seen a lot of, of, our, of our elders, Amos Wilson in particular, Steve Coakley. These guys are starving. These guys can't even pay rent. These people are asking for just rent, you know, rent money. But, you know, nobody should be trying to floss or, 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 make, a, or, or make a killing off or, 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 or of or the knowledge. You know what I'm saying? But there's nothing wrong with somebody being able to live. You know what I mean? We need that because if you can't live, you can't pay to do the necessities. You can't put this information out. And I, I say that most of these people, if you, I don't think that you can floss off the knowledge. You can't. The only way you can floss is if you ain't saying shit. Right. That's that's, that's absolutely. Because look at the people. The people that's putting out the real hardcore information is not flossing. Nah, barely making ends meet. Barely making ends meet. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, Amos Wilson was like my, I, I consider him my unofficial mentor, and I actually went to his funeral in Harlem. Mm. And um, this guy was literally walking around with holes in his shoes. That's ridiculous. You know, trying to do speaking engagements, trying to put the knowledge out and whatever, and it's like, it's not... There's no there's no money in that. It's like that's why you know like I know that there's people um, who who talk about Al Sharpton and stuff. And I and you know I got my issues with Al Sharpton. But one thing I will say, do you think that Al Sharpton is caking out doing what he's doing now? He would cake out more if he was just a bo- a Jack Lake preacher. Right. There's no money in this. No, there's no money in this. There's no money in this. There's no. He would make more money if he was to go the T.D. Jakes way. Yeah, the money is in is in is in what these dudes are doing, the death of auto tunes and those other stuff. This is where the money's at. The money is in using the information that you know and manipulating people based on what you know. That's where the money's at. Yeah. There's no money in, in, in this so called activism or struggling and whatever. It's you know, it's not really if it's a hustle then it's a bad hustle. You wanna cake out, just just go in there, preach John what, John three sixteen yeah. Do a break dance and something, and then just collect a whole shitload of money. But we, as, as, as even the conscious community, we have to stop with the with the adulation of these people because oh man, they making seven hundred million dollars a year. Why they doing this? We we got to stop with the with the Jerry Maguire mentality to show me the money. And and if, if you ain't showing me the money, then what you saying don't mean nothing to me because you ain't got the bigger church or you ain't got you ain't got this going on financially. So what you saying must not be true. Because if it yeah. was true, you'd be making money. Ain't no money to be made in telling the truth. Yeah, man. Is it like that? I have made a quote before from um, this con man who said that, you know, no one is hated more than someone who tells the truth. Hmm, I'm telling you. Because you can't, you can't, you know, a, a, a lie, you can, you know, wrap it up in romance and all this other stuff. Truth is hard and cold. Yeah. Nobody He's likes a, a truth teller. No, truth there's nothing you can do with that. <laughs> no, it puts you, it puts you, it puts you in a, in, a, in a position to have to be responsible for doing something, and nobody wants to do that. They want to sit back in, on the sidelines and watch. Somebody like to watch TV. You want to watch the revolution happen. You don't want to be a part of it. <laughs> nobody wants to be Christ and take up their cross or to, or be Muhammad or be the revolutionary. You want to, you don't want to be Malcolm X. You want to read about him. Let him do that. Let him go to and jail. Let him get shot. The sidelines. That's that whole mind fuck of leadership, like I always say. Because if you notice, any and the brothers and sisters on the line notice this. Whenever you start um, coming on strong, or when you have a really strong personality, people are quick to volunteer you to be a leader. Right. Oh, you need to do. You need to run for office. You need to do this. You need to organize right. this. They're quick to put you out there to be a leader. Why? Because people like to see the leader twisting the wind, and that way they can just sit back and watch and see what you do. Yes, and live living live vicariously through you. You live vicariously through these people, and, and that's what makes these. And that's really the science of the of the so called star in society, whether it be in rap music, whether it be in entertainment. You living through these people, and these people or, or the comedian. They say what you might feel, and we say, "Damn, I, w- I wish I could just say that." But he's saying, "I'm gonna laugh and snicker with him." And then when the when the when the, when the mask around, I'm gonna straighten my face up and be like, "No, nah, that's him. I didn't say that. He said that." 
Oh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. another example of convenient nationalism. And, and how many of you experienced this at the job? See, I'm the type of person that when I'm at my place of work, um, I don't want nobody talking to me about any of this stuff. Why? Because I don't bite my tongue. I don't whisper behind people's backs. Hello? Because if I'm saying the yeah. truth, then there's nothing for me to whisper or be ashamed about. Right. And you got people that will talk, you know, talk a whole, like you were saying earlier, Ambassador, they'll say a whole lot of crap when you're all together. But then they get around white people and they start whispering. I don't do that. Why can't they be in on the conversation? We, uh, I make it a, a point where we're talking about a political discussion, and you know how white people like do that, they just jump in and just stand there, like, I'm, like you know, if two of you guys are together, I want to know what's going on. So I'm going to continue the conversation. Now, if you want to stick around and add something to it, I would love to hear your point of view. They usually don't stay stick around. <laughs> they usually bounce at that point because they, they have nothing to add. That's, that's my big critique with white people. You know, people talk about all, all white people. So why don't you stick around and add on to the to the solution of this racism? What's your solution that's from coming from that point of view? No, nah, because what that's not what your job is. Your job is to make them feel comfortable. I know this job is I had to a, lie. <laughs> I had a Jew. I was talking. I was at where was I? I was at um, Essex County Community College in, in Newark, New Jersey, and we were talking. I was I was talking about the Jews not being the original Jews. It's not they're, they're not the historical Jew. They are the modern day. That's why I call it modern day Israel. And the Jew was there, and they asked him. And we all put him on the spot. He said, "You're right." I said, "So why don't you why don't you preach that? Why don't you talk about that?" So he said, "Because he said that's not my job to do that. That's your job. It's not my job to enlighten your people on who they really are." I said, "Wow." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, I'm, I'm like, just, you know, just kick this lion stuff because that yeah. works for me. Yeah, it's not my job. Wow. Well, hold amazing. on, hold on one second. I'm gonna got another caller here. Last four digits five eight two seven. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Thomas. I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. Peace, God. Peace, God to you too, y'all. I'm really from the Bronx. So, um, I'm it's actually a, a young lady put me on to your program, so I decided so I wanted to call in and, and weigh in. And I mean, so it sounds like you have some interesting discussions here. I, I went back into to YouTube and listen to a couple of the topics about the boule and all these things. And I guess the one of the, the biggest questions I always have is, you know, because I, I have friends here, you know, who are, you know, from other places that's down here in North Carolina. And what, what, what are the solutions you think as far as, for us, because at, at this point in the game, you know, because I got a friend for us, my, my man, he's from Coney Island. He's a, he's a little bit more of a revolutionary. He thinks that, you know, for instance, we talked about the Federal Reserve Bank, how money is fake. So he thinks mm-hmm. you should be able to go take what you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and I said, that's not a realistic solution. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, you know, he's really on it like that. Like, he really feels like, yo, you know, you know let, let's, let's set it. That's where he's at. And I, I said, I don't think that's a realistic solution in this day and age. You know what I mean? I, 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 I'm, I'm more along the, the, the mindset of I think that, you know what? What I see, just like we talked about, when you when you get around Caucasians in, in the workplace, I work for Bank of America, and and you know I work at Bank of America. You know they. One thing with with Caucasians I've noticed is they respect intellect. At the end of the day, they may not like you all the time, right? But you know they respect they, they if if you come off as being intellectually superior, they don't necessarily want you to to know that. But, you know, like, for instance, with me, I don't smoke, I don't drink. So when I'm around and they they, you know, they always want to get me, like, why don't you have a drink? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Because <laughs> you know, they want to see me off balance. They want to see me off my game. They can't mm. they, they can't pierce my armor. Mm. You know what I mean? They don't know what it is about me. So, you from the South Bronx, so you didn't grow up, you didn't have a 40 every once in a while, you know, in the corner with your brothers? Nah, I didn't. Mm. You know what I mean? So, you know, at this point, you know, solutions is like, you know, it, I, I think it goes back to, like, you know, Talking to people and, and you know each one teach one like I you know I'm, I'm one of the people like you know I'm talking to people like I'm in, the, in mortgage finance I tell them about every program that out there is available there's a lot there's a lot of things that are out there 
that can help people get from point A to point B that they don't even know about. Like this money I have for, for single mothers, they can get sometimes five to one magic card view. So I, I don't know. I mean, what's your thought? I mean, you think like, you know, we we set the revolution or we just take it back to each one teach one. I think, I mean, in this day and time, I don't know how realistic a, a revolution is. In a physical sense. Can, well, can I say something about that real quick? I, and I respect what you're saying, brother, and you're right um, in terms of them respecting the intellect. I think we have to starve them out in terms of stop buying into their illusions and their racial baiting and all their, and all their stimulus that they try to put out there. When we starve them out economically by not buying into all that bullshit and mm-hmm. supporting what we should be supporting, I think a lot of things will take care of itself when we start doing that, even if it's on a small level, on an each one, teach one, because that's where it's always been. Yep, that's where it always will be. That's the, that is, that's the hand-to-hand um, knowledge that we got. You know, that's how we got this far, but they didn't, teach us, they didn't teach us this in school. So we got it from the each one, teach one. The brother put you to the side or someone put you on to some information. That's continual, but we have to starve mm-hmm. them out. We got to get rid of that. We got to get rid of their illusions, all their sports and entertainment, all their bullshit, their colognes, all these rappers they throw at us to follow this guy. He tell you to buy this, you buy that. Stop buying all that shit, and then then, mm-hmm. we'll, then we'll starve them out. Yeah, like a perfect example of that is is these newspapers. You know, people will complain about the newspapers are racist and they don't like how they're being treated in the newspapers, but then they're on the train reading these newspapers, purchasing them. Newspapers are on the on the brink of bankruptcy every single month. By design. It's by design, though. You know what I'm saying? If we stopped supporting these newspapers, they would fold. They would fold. Just on our, just on Africans alone, not purchasing the Daily News. I'm, I'm in New York, so it's the Daily News, New York Post. And, and, and you know, just pick a paper in whatever city you're in because they're all, they're all the same, basically. Stop buying them. Why are you supporting things that are disrespecting you? Hello. You know, it's like, it's like the story that um, um, Foxy Brown said that she went to Beverly Hills and when she went in there, they looked at her like she was a criminal, and they walked her, you know, like trying to see what she was doing. It was just disrespecting her. So then what does she do to um, counter this? She buys the most expensive thing in the store. Wow. That really taught that really taught him a lesson. Can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Y'all can hear me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought I was on mute or something. No, nah, no, nah, you, you oh. open. Everybody's open now. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But what you're saying, though, is true because it just reminded me about the whole civil rights movement thing where they, like, did all these. Because I was watching uh, a couple of days ago these little videos when they did the little sit-ins inside the little store, and then they got all that stuff thrown at them. And I was thinking, I'm like, why are they going through all of this to be, how you call it, at this little white restaurant where they could just go ahead and make their own restaurant? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And to answer, oh, let me let me build on what it, Thomas said, we need a nation, brother. Mm. Bottom line, Bottom we need a, a functional, organized nation, and that energy has to be put out there. Mm-hmm. You know, it has to be, it has to be, I don't I don't understand why it's not being, you know, shouted from the mountaintops as we speak. This whole, this whole solo shit is not working. I can give you countless examples of people who will either individually or their own little cliques go out and build up something and have it destroyed by the system. Why? Because they have no back. They don't have a network that is so strong that nobody will fuck with them. The perfect example is what's happening in this L.A. situation. I mean, this this whole, this whole, um, and, and basically it's just another example of bad strategy because we're not organized. If we were organizing in, 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 in just a simplistic way, we can solve a lot of the problems that we're going through right now. But because we are separate, because we're just a scattered group of individualists, then people can take us out and pick us off individually. I mean, people watch these gangster movies and they watch these mobster movies and they love them so much, but they don't take nothing from them. I don't. I don't understand it. You you watch Scarface and Godfather and all this other stuff, and you don't get it. You still don't get it. 
I mean, they, we don't even want to be real gangsters. We got to get back to the trueness of, <clears throat> you know, it is a spiritual thing. It's not a religious thing. And you know, I'm not a religious person, but I'm a spiritual person. It really is. You got to get back to the root of the cause. You know, you know, one thing about the white man, even he, when he deals with his medicine, he only deals with the symptoms. He never deals with the causation. And what right. I like to do is I like to deal with the cause. And the cause is a deep-seated, uh, racialized inferiority complex that he has put in us because it is a reflection of what he's going through. And he has placed that on us. And when we look back at our past, like the brother was writing, I don't know if he ever even responded back again, I was talking about why are we going back to Egypt, because look at what we built. There's no yeah. other race of people that has built what we have built. I mean, we, we came back, we have started it all. So anybody should have a complex is the next man. It's not us. Right. You know what I'm saying? But we made to believe in his. It's like a person is feeling, is feeling uh, ugly about themselves. They want to make you feel that way. No, it shouldn't be that way. But we keep buying into his, his problem. And right. we keep owning it and making it our own. Yeah, he has a self-esteem issue, so he's going to project his self-esteem issue onto you. Right. And and when you have knowledge yourself, it's, it's actually hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. His game is hilarious. Uh-huh. You know, his, his religious locks, his, his God concepts, the things that he put out there. I mean, come on, his God, he said he talked about, uh, you know, God being jealous and things like that. These things that it, in your own mind, like, how could God be jealous? I mean, come on. How could you be jealous of something that you created? He creates all these little religious locks to keep us trapped in his madness because it really right. doesn't make any sense. And the reason why he can't figure out Egypt is because he doesn't have the capability to even have the mindset to do what we did. It's just not in him. It's not in him. It's just not in them. They'll never get it. It's just like they'll never understand why you learn martial arts not to fight. They never. They right. just don't get it. Yep. That makes no sense to them. Why are you learning all these techniques if you can't go out and kill somebody? They don't understand that. They don't understand that the masses realize, I learned all these fighting techniques so I can hold on to my peace and be at peace because now I realize that when I'm scared, it's because I can't defend myself or I'm, or I'm insecure at defending myself. That's when I start to act stupid. But when I'm secure in what I could do, I can now live in my peace. And they can't live that way. They don't. Um, they didn't, They can't comprehend that. It makes no sense to them. Uh, I'm gonna bring in another caller. They've been waiting patiently. Last four digits eight seven six two. What's your name? Where you calling from? What up, fam? This is the Black Regime from Compton. I called you last week. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. I want to get on you about what you call. Like y'all was talking about. Uh, everybody want to be a gangster and all that. Like they right. watch all these gangster movies and shit. Everybody, that same thing with a revolution. Everybody want to be a cartoon character. Yeah. Everybody mm-hmm. want to be um, Malcolm X. Yeah, they ain't really, they ain't really made that sacrifice that he did. Right. They ain't really be no martyr. They just want right. to be out there with a red flag and be getting some pussy. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. They want to be one of these poetry um, celestial waters manifesting all this other crap. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something man I have absolutely I'm, I would be considered like an older head In this game I have no problem with the energy That the brothers like SETI And the, and the, and that, and the R Red, black and green and all that stuff is putting out there Because to be honest with you These Negroes That came before them didn't do shit <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever techniques and whatever insight they have to, what has it done? Absolutely nothing. We in the same spot. We still exactly. just trying to survive. So we need some new energy, and I and I personally applaud the new energy. Mhm. Yep. So yeah. I, I told the sister, the sister Aisha um, Sekhmet, I told her where these, um, like she she put out that video, and all she's getting is is, is um, heat. And resistance inside of the thread. And I said, yeah. wear that resistance like a badge of honor. Because they just hanging on it. Yeah, because the, moment, the moment you're doing something correct, the bootlicking nigga is always going to come out and get activated. And that's how you catch the bootlick. That's how you catch them, Uncle Tom. Shit. That's, how you catch that's the quickest way to catch them. Shit. 
Playing the these are the same the motherfuckers. The, these are the same motherfuckers that when the kids back in the days was wearing Malcolm X caps, instead of applauding them and trying to give them some more insight into about Malcolm X, like, oh, you don't know Malcolm. Oh, nigga, you're going to go jail for that shit. Oh, nigga, nigga you're going to hell for that. When niggas, <laughs> I mean, shit, I remember so, all the time. So we, fuck, fuck these old niggas. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them. I remember I was trying to read the Quran. And I wasn't even getting into it. All these motherfuckers be saying, Oh, you going to hell for that. Oh, Jesus is going to kill you for that. I'm like, what the fuck? Jesus is going to kill you for that. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what they The Christian God is definitely a prison warden. <laughs> <laughs> Always ready to kill somebody. Always yeah, he's going to kill you. He's going to snuff hell. you out in your sleep. <laughs> he's going to kill you. Look, look okay. he's going to kill you, but he's going to let the devil... Live for billions. Oh, yeah, the devil did. The devil got <laughs> <devil, laughs> <devil, laughs> But you But you going to get some ass and you're going to die. You're yeah. going to hell. The devil can get an extension, though. He can go to God and say, you know what? I need more time. <laughs> I need more and time. God just gives him extension folks. after extension. And not just days extension. Like, thousand years extension. Mm-hmm. Get the fuck out of here with this bullshit, man. <laughs> We need the youth, man. We need the young energy, the, the uncompromising energy. I don't give a shit how much curse words you say. I don't That's care all. about none of that bullshit. <laughs> That's all. And to be honest with you, like, um, is Thomas still on the line? Yes, I'm still here. Yeah. What you were saying before, it's not really, the, the stuff that Seti is kicking is not unrealistic to me. What it is is it's, it's a part, it's, it's, you got to look at everything holistically. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, one thing that's definitely got to be on the docket is self-defense. Yeah. yeah. That's got to be on the docket. I'm not, I, as a matter of fact, I don't want to hear no nobody kicking nothing unless you're talking about self-defense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you so something. We done, we, we, done did, yeah, we done did the whole Black Wall Street thing before. Mm-hmm. We've done that. you gotta be, you got to be prepared to fight these fools and protect mm-hmm. your own. Yeah. Something interesting. I, this is something very interesting down here in North Carolina. You know, it, it's relatively simple to get a, a concealed weapon permit. Like you can get in North Carolina, you get a concealed weapon permit, and you can, your license to carry like 32 states. You know, which is and, and I went to the class. And now this is the interesting part about it. It was like a class of like 50 people, and I was the only black person. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean, so. And, and the crazy thing about it is when you talk to them, like, there was, you know, a lot of people who were, like, either they owned a home, they owned a business, all of them had illegal burners, every mm-hmm. last one of them. So they didn't get legal until Obama came in office. Wow. So that's why the gun manufacturers and the bullet makers are, are having record profits because they think that, you know, their Second Amendment right is going to be taken away. No, they think they, they think it's going to be crazy when Obama gets shot. That's yeah. why they go. That's why they buying all the guns. <laughs> they thinking, oh, we niggas going to start buying the street. Niggas ain't going to do shit when Obama gets shot. It's mm-hmm. going to be the same thing as when Malcolm gets shot, got shot, <laughs> exactly. and Martin got shot. It's exactly. going to be quiet. It's going to be a couple songs. Some niggas going to pray, and then that's it. Right. We might have you a can't, day. You can't. Day. You can't operate off of emotions, man. Mm-hmm. I love. I, I mean, I loved it. When that whole thing went down in L.A. after the uh, the Rodney King thing, mm-hmm. but yeah. when you look at it in retrospect, we got to learn from that. It was an emotional response, and we fucked up all shit. You know what I'm wow. saying? It was an we emotional it response. Everybody. It wasn't. It wasn't a strategic response. If it and was we strategic, can't do we that no more, man. We would have destroyed all L.A. if it was strategic shit. Uh, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna build on what uh, Toilette has said earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, he was saying we we gotta we gotta uh, stop the white man to their games. You know, um, financially, if we stop buying their products, and there, there's there's a whole lot of other alternative black products out there for us to buy. Um, start doing it, my damn self. Um, I was reading an article in Black Enterprise. There's a family, I believe, out in the south. I'm gonna send you the information. Um, hold up, me, but um. They basically, for the past year, have been just buying black products. Oh, I heard about that. And um, mm-hmm. and they couldn't do every everything they couldn't buy from black products, but about seventy 
percent of the services and the goods they purchase mm-hmm. from black was from black people. If we could all do that, or a majority of us do that, we we could shut this thing down. Man, it's so easy. You know what? Once you get knowledge yourself and you get some ideological clarity, you will see just how easy this shit actually is. Like I tell people all the time, most of the shit that we going through, I can probably solve in one generation. Mm-hmm. Give me the kids in preschool level, and we'll be we'll be straight. <laughs> That's true. Preschool though. level will be straight. One generation is all it would take, and I can actually solve the police brutality in one month. <laughs> one I'm month is all it would take, and I ain't saying it over the air. I'm with that. Yeah. We gotta we gotta be real with it, and like you said, we gotta do do what we supposed to do. You know, do what we supposed to do, and what we supposed to do is stand up for our people and be strong. Give them the information that they need to build on, and, and, and stop selling ourselves short. Right. There's nothing in that. There's nothing in selling yourself out for what this temporary little money. You know what I'm saying? This temporary little money. That's why people love, especially mm-hmm. our people. We love to see uh, uh, movies like 300 and things where they show a gladiator or a warrior, which is based on us, by the way. But they just didn't put our they didn't put our complexion in the movie. It's based on us standing up for what you believe in strong enough for you really to really to put yourself out there. Yeah, we we attracted to that message, but don't want to take that and make it practical in our lives. We like we attracted to it first. Yeah, you know it's, it's like, like catch, people. It's, people yeah. will go into the movies and cheer for Neo from the Matrix, but in real life, people hate <laughs> Neo's guts. <best. laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like nobody wants, the whole nobody likes shirt. Neo. Neo is the guy. Neo is actually a terrorist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't he? I mean, he's a guy who's against the system, so he's a terrorist. Nobody likes the terrorists in real life, but they'll go to the movies and cheer for him. But but look how far. I mean, just this. I mean, just look how far we have fell off as black men. Uh, I, I was thinking about that sister. You know, it's going to take the women to come out and start revealing the truth, like like. The ISIS papers, Francis Cress Welsing, uh, Yurugu, Marimba, and me. It's a lot of these sisters that's taking information because this is who this is who our teachers were. So when the men, when they separated the men, it was the woman that raised us. I mean, they got us in skinny jeans, mohawks, brothers walking around looking sweet as can be, and that's ex- <laughs> and, that's, and, and, they, and they're able to come in for our people. You know what I'm saying? Make mm-hmm. money off of that image. Nobody said, hold up, this dude like Kanye West. And am I the only person that could see this dude? Is obviously. A, a, a frustrated hey. homosexual? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's obvious to me. I mean, when you see a guy like him, it's not even to me. It's like he's in a, it's like, I mean, what am I, what am I seeing? I'm seeing this dude is a fag, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> he did by Jay-Z, shit. Sure. Yeah, right, Jay-Z, another one. That Tupac already called him out, and they, had, and they got rid of him. And now he's making all the money. He's an Oprah Winfrey with his Mr. Rogers a uh, sweater looking all sweet. <laughs> <laughs> looking like I a white boy. Yeah, I guess it's like a, a white beautiful boy. day in the neighborhood. That's Marcy right there, what you saw? Yeah. That's Marcy? Yeah, that's, that's Marcy. <laughs> that ain't Marcy, shit. I've been a Marcy once. That ain't fucking Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he can't I even wanna... go to Marcy without, without a bunch of bodyguards and police presence. I want to see him try to go back there with no bodyguards. Yeah, yeah that can't. won't happen. He can't. <laughs> he can't. He and what that, and that says a lot like right there, man. Yeah. Well, you can't go back to your own home. Yeah. Wow. You changed that much. Nah, you done. Never. You never. done. He moved out. Wait. Yep. And he didn't put nothing back. When you look at that show, it looked like he just left. Like like he was he was just there. I don't see no change in the Marcy Projects since he's been there. He could have bought the damn projects. Sure, he could have. You know what I'm saying? Made them the Marcy condos, the Jay-Z condos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we, we got to get real with the revolution. And a lot of times the revolution, it is, it, I heard a brother say, you know, the dude want to set it off. You know, he just want to just take this money. I mean, hey, do what you got to do, but you got to be willing to be, you know, if you want to do the time, because you ain't got nobody got your yeah. back out here. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was 
Actually, that, that dovetails. Both of you, you both touched on the points, I guess, that I, I was getting. Well, I was saying was it, it wasn't a feasible or realistic solution. Like, because basically, you know, he, you know, we had this whole conversation about, you know, like, for instance, money. Money isn't real. It has no value. Like, money has no value other than what's been placed on it by an establishment. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and and realistically, I mean, we all know Federal Reserve Bank basically inflated this whole money supply situation. That's why the dollar right now is worth more simple back in the 1920s. So, yeah, it is printing you know, money. Yeah, exactly. Burning money right now. Money. Sure. Exactly. So his whole thing is, you know, money isn't real. You know, he's 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 damn near like how the the, the Rastafarians feel like fuck you. You know, this is job made this. This is mine. You know what I mean? That's, he was on some shit like that. I was like, right. you know, Rod. That's what I said, Rod. I don't know if that's realistic. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, he's he just going to take, like, what, what, he was on what, exactly, what exactly is he proposing? I'm kind he's of on some, like, you know, he, you know, he, 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 he's, just, he's a smart dude. He's from Coney Island. He's just on some shit like, fuck it. I'm just, I just say we take shit. Like, like nah, so I don't know if that's realistic. Like, like you said, there's not enough. we are not mobilized. We can't even, we can't even all be in agreement on on minor issues, much less right. talk about a major movement. So you know, for I said for you to go out and, and say you're going to take something, just you know, just colonize some shit. That's what you basically talking about, like basically colonizing and taking mm-hmm. shit. I'm like, I, I don't know if that's realistic, my man. How many how many brothers and sisters on this phone have actually read the the art of war? Man, I, 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 I'm going through yeah. it. Well, I, then it that should answer the question when it comes to the whole. <laughs> Um, so, you know, like this concept of a military assault on the European at this stage of the game in our development. Exactly. You can't that should born. answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> you know I, what I'm I gave saying? Him that book. I, I just gave him that book because I, I was reading The Art of War, The Art of The 33 Savages of War, The Art of War, The Art of The Art of War, The Art of I had all those. I sent him all those books, and I was like, you know, trying to get him to understand. You just can't because he... He's really wild like that. He really be thinking on some shit like that. They well, they got they got to think strategic, and they got to also look at the the part in there where it says that a properly trained military can defeat an opponent without firing a weapon. That's yep. scary shit out. That's psychological mm-hmm. right there. And yeah. I never truly understood or comprehended what that meant until later on, and I understand what it means now because look at the way that the system is set up here in America. How are you going to mount an offensive against them when you can't even organize amongst your own people? Mm-hmm. And see, that's what they mean. The propaganda and the, and the way they have the system set up has got you dis, dis, discombobulated. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't get together and formulate a plan and strategy because there's so much firewalls and, and, and filters in place to keep you from doing that. Mm-hmm. So they don't ever have to fire a weapon to defeat you because you'll never mount an offensive against them if you can't organize. Mm-hmm. And the way that that's going to end is when we come to that realization that this is the game that's being played. We're not going to allow you to play it no more. Mm-hmm. It just makes sense. I'm trash for us. Every, every inch we get, we fall like 10 feet back. Right. Every inch we go for, we fall 10 feet back. Yeah. And with the whole money thing, you saw it like it was in Germany. Mm-hmm. You had little kids that can brace the $100 bills up and playing with them like they was blocks. This is why I posted that thing on my, I don't know if anybody saw it, but I posted on um, my YouTube channel this dude named Max Kaiser who gave an a, a explanation of why inflation hasn't hit us, like a technical explanation so that people can understand what's going on. The reason why, because people are, the reason why everybody's expecting the dollar really, if they was to base the dollar against commodities like gold and silver, Gold would be trading at about thirty thousand dollars an ounce. Mm-hmm. So why isn't it? Because they're manipulating the system. Yeah, they are. They're put. They're pumping money. What people didn't um, factor into the whole inflation thing was the um, concept of credit. They hustling mm-hmm. everybody. Because what happened was they gave. They pumped seven hundred billion dollars, but they didn't pump it into the real economy. They gave it to the banks. Right. So basically they gave them $700 billion worth of credit. It's not a real economy. It's a fake economy. Right, exactly. and, that, and, that, and that goes back to what the brother was saying about the money. First of all, the money has not been backed by gold and silver since, uh, I believe, Franklin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, 
Right. Uh, when they got when they started that Federal Reserve, um, this is fiat money. F I A T. Exactly. Fiat we gotta money. understand they're, what they're money, money is. You gotta understand first of all what is money fundamentally. What is it? Unless you understand, because a person who sees a stack of of fiat currency on the floor and is scrambling and shooting people in the head to get it, then they obviously don't understand what money is. I mean, exactly. when you have power, you can make cow chips into money. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's say, for instance, there was some nuclear. Let's say, for there was some nuclear holocaust, and shit is all fucked up. You got you got mm-hmm. states burning up. Money is just all over. The banks is blowing up. What what good is your money? <laughs> your, your, your money is all, yeah. Your money is all about the face that is that is backed on. And that's what we talking about. It's not backed on actual something you can trade in. It's a face based money. Right. You know, and th- and this goes back to see and and this dovetails to something else that you said, brother, early about about the understanding the root causes of problems. Right. right? And that that's where history sees. I don't know what it was, but something intuitively when I was growing up, you know, I mean, I I always liked to read. I read everything from encyclopedias hmm. to everything I could get my hands on, and it allowed me to, to be somewhat what you would consider hmm. successful in their schools. Because right. everybody I grew up with, you know, was getting left back two and three times. Right. You know what I mean? And, you know, I was fortunate enough I even got a chance to go to, to private school on scholarship. You know what I mean? And because of my love for reading, you know, I understood history. Because right. you know, all, everyone who's wealthy and is in power understands history. They have a knowledge and they have a respect. And they know the real history. They know what the difference between what they put out in the books that you get from your curriculum versus what reality is. You know what I mean? And, you know, just like, for instance, we don't understand the origins of money. We don't understand how money came into being, why it was created. You know, you know they don't understand it. The difference between you know a barter and trade society versus an agrarian society versus you know feudalism versus you know capitalism right. versus communism and, and we don't and unless we we take it back to that rudimentary understanding of how societies are formed and why right. certain things are put in place then like I said all, all, you know we'll just be going forward in, in, a, in a, a direction not achieving anything you have to understand where this all comes from and that's and you know. Like, Right, and that's, and that's exactly what you what you say is exactly right. Um, um, that's like having a that's like having the keys um, to a mansion, but the only problem is you don't know which mansion this key opens up to. You don't know what door exactly. this opens up to. You just, you just got a key, or a brother got a library card. He's not going into the library with the right focus, with the right with the right base knowledge of what I'm going in here to get. Right. When you did all that study and you did all that reading, that made you a well-rounded person. Now, when you mix that in with the knowledge itself, oh, you you a dangerous individual because now you're able to see it from all angles. See, what they don't want is for you to come to the conclusion that you want power. Mm-hmm. Because I don't fuck money. I want power. Mm-hmm. And that's what people, when, when we stop looking at this fucking dollar, because first of all, like you said, this dollar is b- bullshit. That's the United States is running a fucking game on the world, and people yeah, are buying it because they got the they dressing the hoe up and making the hoe look pretty. Yo, <laughs> <laughs> check it out. Wait, wait, let me ask you this, right? What's the difference between what Bernard Madoff did and what the Treasury and the Federal Reserve does? Nothing. He took the fall. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That's, right. that's, that's what the thing that's so hilarious okay, about. Yo, somebody, about what somebody, happened, said, like, somebody said they wanted to build on something. I heard him say that. Who was that? Oh, that was, that was me. Oh, okay. oh shit. <laughs> Go ahead. But yeah, even if, like you were saying, that dollar right there is fake, and it also says that in God we trust. And they trusting on the face value of this dollar, meaning that this dollar or the symbolism on the dollar, as the Masons going to say, is who you got, you placing your trust in and to control your economy, to control your way of living. Because... Economic status is probably on the first or second thing on ninety eight percent of the people's minds. Mm-hmm. So even when they actually understand that this is a fake, a fake document and doctrine that they pushing out there for you, that's when you go really want that change and that's that also adds to that revolution. Yeah. 
Right. Oh, I just want to let everybody know there's nobody that's actually on hold. Everybody's open. So if you want something, want to say something, just jump on in. Everybody in the queue is actually on on you know on the air. So. But that but that but that but that fiat money um that fiat money if you want to research that F I A T that fiat money they have something called a debt ceiling. They really haven't even they they still play with people. They could go they could go about three or four trillion dollars more. And guess what? These people can even vote to increase the debt ceiling. So they can well, keep increasing the ceiling. I'm going to tell you something, man. It is so much derivative out there that they can't even put a number on it. That's why mm-hmm. nobody's really, like when they throw out this, this one is a billionaire and that one's a billionaire, it's all on paper. You can't make any of that shit liquid. Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, Only- just, it's just on paper digitally. If you read your computer printout, you're a billionaire. But let you have, make that, that billion dollars liquid. Mm-hmm. No, you Cash can't out do your it. chips. You can't or do could it. They lift a million dollars. Well, well that, that, this is a fact. You know, this is from working in the banking industry so long. It's only three percent of the actual money supplies and actual currency. So you know, no, no matter what, at any point in time, if you're going to one of the largest banks, you go to Chase or you go to City, they're never going to have more than three percent of the actual money in hard currency because. Everything is basically like the brother said, it's electronic credits. And mm-hmm. going back to what the, the first brother said about, <laughs> you know, about the way the system works is that, you know, you know, power is, is where it all lies in. Because, for instance, if the Federal Reserve, see, this, this is how it works, right? Federal Reserve Bank, if they wanted to monetize the U.S. debt, your money then becomes, so you could be a millionaire, and if they monetize the debt, you go from being a millionaire to being worth a few thousand dollars because they can monetize all the debt and basically take all the debt that the U.S. government has and all the citizens, make it as part of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet and, and increase inflation by 100%. Right. So the money, so the money is, as, is absolutely worthless, and people like don't don't understand why that why it is or how it came into existence. And you know we work so hard. For something yet we un- don't understand it. Right. We, but, you know, we slave some... and toil. We slave and toil for it, but we don't understand how it works and why it works the way it does. We don't understand the concept of leverage or derivatives or options. Right. So we get le- we get left behind. You know, you know remember I mean? that book that came out that said everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. Um, I would say everything I need to know I learned in the hood, because mm-hmm. where I've come from in, in Brooklyn, New York. If I got all the guns, if I got all the might, and you got all the money, your money is my money. That's my money. Exactly. exactly. You feel what I'm saying? So the United States it's is coming mine, to the world. Mine, yours is mine. Right. The United States is coming to the world like, you know what, I'm never going to be out of money because you got my money. You hold on exactly. to my fucking money. Exactly. Because and I'll come like and I take said, your money. Like I said, they, what they do is they, government has the, the ability to legitimize extortion. That's all governments, they, all they do is legitimize extortion. That's what makes them different than the mafia, just, you know, in terms of perception. That's the only difference between them and the mafia. Because the bottom line is all a law is is an opinion backed by a gun. Mm-hmm. America, That's all it is. full of gangs. And like Tupac said, America full of gangs. America, you got the Republicans, you got Democrats, you got the cops, you got the Army, Navy, Marines. That's gangs right there, shit. Right. That's how they keep control. I mean, like they said, if you if you take everybody's money away, what the fuck's gonna happen? Everybody gonna be pissed. That's why America kissing China's ass right now, because they owe China trillion, like over a trillion dollars. Oh, they yeah, but but China, China doesn't have yeah. We'll see how China's military. We'll see what happens with China's military, because they say and I say say you know what? Yeah, I owe you money. Come come get your money. Mm-hmm. I pay you when I fuck. It's like how we do our bills. I pay you when I got it, bitch. Yeah, but China, China <laughs> just waiting, man. That bitch is just waiting for something. I'll like, pay I'll you fuck. when I'm ready to pay you. I'll pay you when I'm ready to pay. If I ain't got it, you can't get it if I ain't got it. Well, you know what? The United States does know this. They know that everybody else is um, on their tip, and they have a they have a vested interest in the United States being able to consume. Mm-hmm. And that's the only right. thing because that's the only thing the United yeah, States right. does. They consume mm-hmm. and they export war. That's it. 
They don't do anything else. They don't manufacture anything. No. And the, and the, and the reason why Wall Street blew everything up is because they they were making money just on pure transactions. Mm-hmm. You know, just flipping and bouncing credits back and forth and, and building them up and building them up until the damn thing burst. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it in a nutshell. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. But, you know, oh. Ambassador. Yeah. We were talking offline, and I, I wanted we touched on something that's kind of relevant to the topic of chess. Right. And you were talking about the difference between the white pieces and the black pieces. Could you go into that? Yeah, we were talking about um, you know chess is a game that we need to. I'm 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 sure um, some of us can play chess. You know, on this on this on this on this um, telephone call right now. But we need to learn how to play chess. And chess is a is something that um, Francis Cress Welding broke down in ISIS papers uh, as a game that we need to understand as far as strategy. The white man, of course, represents the white pieces who who has the uh, uh, the obligation to move first. Mm-hmm. We spoke about yesterday. That's not always uh, the most advantageous position, even though it it does appear to be advantageous because it forces the black to be in a defensive position. And the black has to has to make the white make a mistake or two mistakes actually. The first mistake he makes, he puts him even or even par. The second mistake, the black cannot take the advantage. And and, and that's how we're playing. We're playing from the black position, um, which is the counter position, which is something like people like you know like, like you know Floyd Mayweather. These guys they play from the. I'm gonna let you react. Which is not a bad position to play from, actually, because then you end up letting the person show their hand, and then you respond to what they showed you, mm-hmm. if you know how to play your hand. Right. True. And, what I, and, to, and to build on the point that he was making, I was I was pointing out to him that when Malcolm X was around, the white man found him to be curious. Because they knew that he was intelligent, they knew that he was smart, and they knew that he was on the right path, but they knew that he was still in the Islam thing. They knew at the time when he was in it that it was bullshit. Right. So they would, So think about that. This was in the 60s. And that's why he wasn't really... And we just that. now getting... It's 2009, <laughs> and we just now <laughs> figuring out that that whole um, Islam and Christianity and Judaism crap was bullshit. They knew this in his time, so they look. They they respected him because they knew that he was intelligent. But at the same time, they knew that he wasn't really on the right. He wasn't there yet. Did you right. still fuck it around with this bullshit? Now, imagine so that's that's what you call that. that's what you call a chess grandmaster. Right. You forty they, they years ahead yeah. of the moves that we making. Come on, man. Also, yeah. to build to build on mm-hmm. the uh, the chess concept. Um, the Freemasons, their whole their rituals are on a chess board, which means you know they and they they call themselves grandmasters. You know. mm-hmm. right. They already they already are deep in with with chess and the mysteries of chess and what it represents on on a life you know on our um, building it you know on on on, on how we react on, on life. Right. Did y'all guys did y'all guys see when um Sonetta was playing the dude the young dude on um on YouTube? Nah, I didn't see that. Yeah, I saw that. Tell him yeah, about that. Get, yeah, you got I mean, he was schooling the dude. Basically they was playing speed chess and he was schooling the dude, telling the dude, you know what I mean, you playing like a baby. He's 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 actually schooling him as he's doing that, he's exposing what he's doing and the mistakes he's making because he's not seeing the board. He's making mistakes based on emotion, and that's and that's what we do. We don't see the board, the board being the game of life, and we're not seeing the moves that's being made around us. We don't see the 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 the, the TV spells, these moves, these moves being made. We just fall in victim to it, getting caught up, and you will lose the game Funny, that way. I, I recently started playing chess again, and I somewhat I'm playing the computer right now, and I I I've been one of those people who. I don't want to lose my queen. Hmm. And if you play that way, oh, I, you, because because the queen, although we love the queen, 
The queen is to aid the, the, the objective of chess, which is to protect the king. The queen has been given all the power. The queen is the most powerful piece on the board as far as its movements is concerned. But the king is what the queen is there to protect. Thank so you. If, you, if, you get caught up in, if you get caught up in the queen itself, you will lose the game. So I played, I played a game, and um, I'm the white. I'm the, usually the white, the, the white. So mm -hmm. I decided to play a little more offensively, be a little mm -hmm. more aggressive, and I didn't care if I lost the queen. I wound up win. I wound up winning. Mm -hmm. And you know, chess is a deep game. We we, we need to <laughs> really investigate that. And not only chess, I mean, take everything and apply it to life, man. Everything. Pain, pain. Everything. Everything. I want, I want to play you all something, and I want you to tell me how this applies to life, and, it, and especially applies to our situation as, as black people in this country. Just take a listen to this and tell me what you think. It will change. And it will change because they want it to change, not, not because of me. It will change because they want to be champions. But right now we got to figure out uh, the formula, our formula. Our formula is this. We go out, we hit people in the mouth, number one. Number two, we are not a charity. We cannot give them the game. That's number two. And number three is we execute from the very start of the game to the very end of the game. I will not tolerate um, players that think it's about them when it's about the team. And um, we, cannot make, we cannot make decisions that cost the team and then come off the sideline and it's nonchalant. No. You know what? I, I, this is how I believe, okay? I'm from the old school. I believe this. I would rather play with ten people and just get penalized all the way until we got to do something else, rather than play with 11 when I know that right now that person is not sold out to be a part of this team. It is more about them than it is about the team. I cannot play with them, cannot win with them, cannot coach with them, can't do it. I want winners. I want people that want to win. Um, and it's not so much to play, but it's more the mindset. Um, and still having a chance to find out who wants to win, who really wants to win. I told him that he would do a better job for us right now, taking a shower and coming back and watching the game than going out on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just like a bad relationship. You don't know when it's going to turn again. And after a while, you become a part of the problem rather than the solution. Ooh. I want guys that are solution-oriented, starting with myself. I'm not going to try and make something work when it doesn't fit. I've always been a firm believer. And it's nothing like it was anything magical or anything. Uh, and you, in, in all honesty, you probably do not want to hear it, okay? But it was just yeah. sharing my heart with him. Um, it's as simple as that. And, but I, I just believe that things that we talk about in the locker room um, should stay there. We, we did not play anywhere near um, where I felt we could have played. And rather than go into the, well, see, this happened here and, and that guy was out of place, I'm not going through that. I'm just going to apologize and uh, just ask you guys to, uh, I won't even say anything, I just, just, just keep watching. That's all I can tell you. you just keep watching. Now that's, that's, that yeah. whole thing is about a football game. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. And that's just screaming what the problem is with us. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> you know, we, are, we, we got a team, and we got to play like a team. If we're going to go out there and just individually do our own thing, then we're going to get our asses kicked collectively, and that's what's happening. So the solution is we got to have a nation, man. We got to have an organized um, way of dealing with problems because that's what it is. It's about problem solving. If you have a problem, you have to figure out a way to solve that problem. And that's it in a nutshell. That's it. And